Hey guys, it's Metacosis perfectionalis, which sounds exactly like Pneumatosis intestinalis. We are talking about rheumatology in this series of lectures. There is a playlist on my channel called Rheumatology. Please subscribe and save it. Today's topic is Felty syndrome, a clinical triad of rheumatoid arthritis, neutropenia, and splenomegaly occurs later during rheumatoid arthritis. It's extremely rare and extremely dangerous because when you have neutropenia, you have increased risk of infections. With that being said, now let's get started. So, Felty syndrome occurs in less than 1% of rheumatoid arthritis patients, especially when they have extra articular manifestations during the late stage of rheumatoid arthritis. Incidence is declining thanks to biological DMRs. In the old days, we used to treat rheumatoid according to the severity. So if rheumatoid was mild, we give mild treatment. If it was moderate, okay, moderate treatment. If it was severe rheumatoid, we use severe treatment or lots of treatment, but not anymore. Today, once you're diagnosed with rheumatoid, the doctor goes all in, aggressive treatment aggressive treatment. Why? To decrease all of these garbage diseases and extra articular manifestations so that you may achieve remission. If you ask any doctor who lived 65 years ago, have you ever heard of rheumatoid remission? Never. It's impossible. But now it's possible thanks to those biological DMARDs. Felty syndrome is more common in whites has triad of neutropenia, splenomegaly, and nodular RA. What do you mean by nodular? I mean there are rheumatoid nodules. Therefore, it's extra articular manifestations of rheumatoid. Therefore, these are the late stages of rheumatoid. Makes perfect sense. Fever, anemia, thrombocytopenia, and ulcers may occur. Rheumatoid plus filter you have increased risk of lymphoma. Again, that's why we use aggressive treatment from the beginning. What is the pathogenesis of Felty syndrome? Okay. So we start with the spleen. Normally, there are some neutrophils hiding in the spleen. Why? Because the spleen is a blood organ. It contains blood, like lots of it. Ask any surgeon who is removing the spleen. It's blood rich. Okay, so since it has blood, it will have anything that's in the blood. Neutrophils, red blood cells, platelets, etc. And it will also have antibodies, because these antibodies are in the blood called hemoral immunities, secreted by the B lymphocytes. One of those antibodies are O2 antibodies called neutrophil binding IgGs. Those IgGs are going to bind the neutrophils in the spleen. And then macrophages are going to destroy the neutrophils in the spleen, shortening the lifespan of neutrophils in the spleen, resulting in less neutrophils in the peripheral smear or the peripheral blood. Because we have two types of blood. We have central blood that's in the bone marrow and we have peripheral blood that's floating around in the blood vessels. When we take a sample of blood from a patient, it's usually from a peripheral vein. So when we see neutropenia in the peripheral blood, because those neutrophils are being destroyed in the spleen, leaving less neutrophils in the periphery. Okay, I got it. Therefore, in Felty syndrome, splenectomy may help treat this condition. Why? Because neutrophils are being kicked out of the spleen into the periphery because now neutrophils have nowhere to hide. They used to hide in the spleen normally. They used to hide more in the spleen in cases of splenomegaly because the spleen is big, can swallow more blood and more blood cells. When you remove the spleen, you're removing the neutrophil binding IgGs that were in the spleen, even those antibodies have no place to hide. And you have removed the battlefield, which is the spleen. All of these are the cause or are the reason why splenectomy can help in Felty syndrome. Later on, I will discuss a disease called ITP, immune thrombocytopenic purpura. And in ITP, we can also remove the spleen for the same three causes, but instead of neutrophils, it's the famous platelet baby, same freaking mechanism. What are the causes of splenomegaly? Increased demand, blood flow abnormalities from and to the spleen, splenic infiltration. This is not the spleen's fault. This is not the spleen's fault. This is the spleen fault, infiltration of the spleen self. 
increased demand of the spleen is not the, the spleen's fault. It's because your bone marrow is toast, is history. So we have lots of stuff. We have reticular endothelial system hyperplasia, immune hyperplasia, extra medullary hematopoiesis because your bone marrow is history, and disordered immunoregulation such as rheumatoid arthritis and felty. We call this loss of tolerance. Tolerance of what? Because your antibodies should tolerate you. They should tolerate the self. But in autoimmune disease, O2 antibodies do not tolerate the self. They destroy the self. They destroy you. Which is weird. That's why it's a disease. Look at these causes of extramedullary hematopoiesis. All of them are related to bone marrow. So, myelofibrosis, myelothesis or infiltration by tumor, by lymphoma, by leukemia, etc. Marrow damage by radiation, by toxins, etc. Next, we have blood flow abnormality. The blood supply of spleen is severed or hampered or whatever, messed up with. We have here the splenic artery coming into the spleen, splenic vein exiting the spleen. The splenic vein will come in union with the superior mesenteric vein to form the famous portal vein that goes into the liver, forming this shape which looks exactly as the Mercedes logo, which is where Mercedes logo took their logo from, from the superior mesenteric vein and the splenic vein. The last part was sarcasm. After that, portal vein, you have a liver. And after that, we have hepatic vein going into the heart. So here are the causes of splenomegaly. Ready? Okay, problem with the splenic vein. Yep, splenic vein is not draining the spleen. The spleen is swelling splenomegaly. SMV, problem here? Not necessary because if you have problem here, still the splenic vein can drain the spleen. So you're fine. And obstruction of the portal vein, of course, such as portal vein thrombosis could be intrahepatic or extrahepatic. This will hamper the spleen, yep, because the spleen now cannot drain through the vein, so it will swell, called splenomegaly. How about cirrhosis? Of course, when the liver is toast, it cannot drain the spleen. How about schistosomiasis or bilharziasis? Yep, the liver is history, now the spleen cannot drain. Okay, how about hepatic vein obstruction? Yep, because it's here, we'll back up the liver, back up the portal vein, back up the splenic vein, back up the spleen. The spleen is gonna swell because it has lots of blood called splenomegaly. How about CHF? Yes, CHF, we are backing up blood, back pressure on the hepatic vein, on the liver, called nutmeg liver. So every time I go to Starbucks, when I add nutmeg to my coffee, I suffer because I remember CHF. Medicine has ruined my life. Next, we have, we'll back up on the liver, back up on the portal vein, back up on the splenic vein, back up on the spleen, so CHF can cause splenomegaly. Yep. Medicine is so easy if explained properly. Next, splenic infiltration. Yeah, this is the spleen's fault. Something is in the spleen, infiltrating the spleen. Could be amyloidosis. And in cases of rheumatoid arthritis, we have secondary amyloidosis. So, in rheumatoid arthritis, you can have felty syndrome causing splenomegaly due to disordered immunoregulation, and you can have secondary amyloidosis infiltrating the spleen. Both of these can cause splenomegaly. What else? Hodgkin's disease, myeloproliferative neoplasm such as polycythemia vera and essential thrombocytosis, and I've talked about these in previous videos in my hematology playlist, and the sphingolipidosis. Gaucher's, Neiman Pick disease, and Hurler, which is a mucopolysaccharidosis. Every single student hates these diseases because they are very hard to memorize. So, what causes splenomegaly in case of Gaucher's and Neiman Pick disease? And the answer is splenic infiltration. By what? By the sphingolipids. Okay, how about Hurler? By the mucopolysaccharides. Causes of neutropenia, decreased production, increased destruction, and peripheral pooling. What is pooling? Okay. Neutrophils hide in two places. Number one, the spleen. Number two, the lung. How about platelets? They hide in the spleen. How about red blood cell? They hide in the spleen. Okay. So, decreased production, oh, blame the bone marrow. Alkylating agent, toxins, destroying your bone marrow. Aplastic anemia, your bone marrow is toast, having pancytopenia and hypocellular marrow on bone marrow biopsy. 
B12 and folate deficiency. Your bone marrow is a hard working stud. It's the factory and the factory needs lots of raw material. When you have no raw material, you have no factory operation called hematopoiesis. And last we have infections such as tuberculosis and others. Increased destruction, peripheral destruction. What do you mean by peripheral? I mean it's not central. What do you mean by central? By central I mean bone marrow. The destruction of neutrophils happens outside of the marrow and in the peripheral blood, including the spleen. Autoimmune such as felty, rheumatoid and lupus, all of these three can cause neutropenia. Okay. Where did the destruction happen in case of felty and the spleen? Granulomatosis with polyangiitis, formerly known as Wigner's. Anti-neutrophil antibodies. These are types of autoantibodies. Don't say anti-neutrophil antibodies, ANA, no, no. ANA is anti-nuclear, okay? They, no abbreviation for these. Cool. Peripheral pooling, and we'll talk about that later. But in brief, your neutrophils are hiding. That's why this is transient. Causes of leukopenia. We have Felty syndrome, TLGL, and side effects of medications. This stands for T-cell large granular lymphocytic syndrome. God help us. Felty is clinical picture and complications. Same as rheumatoid arthritis. Splenomegaly. Okay, containing neutrophil binding IgGs leading to neutropenia. When you have neutropenia, you have increased risk of infection. Anemia and thrombocytopenia. Why? Probably due to the splenomegaly. Because the spleen is a blood organ. When the spleen is huge, it contains lots of blood. Decreasing red blood cells in the peripheral smear. Decreasing platelets in the peripheral smear or in the peripheral blood. Okay, I'm not sure about that. It's just my theory. Fever. Felties cause fever of unknown origin. Hepatomegaly. Vasculitis causing ulcer and brown pigmentation of the skin. In large lymph node, be very careful because this could be lymphoma because rheumatoid arthritis plus Felty syndrome equals increased risk of lymphoma. Do you think this lymphoma is going to be Hodgkin's or non-Hodgkin's? Most probably it's going to be non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Which subtype of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma Probably the diffuse large B cell lymphoma because in rheumatological conditions, rheumatoid arthritis, Jogren, etc., this type of lymphoma is commoner than others. So how to diagnose Felty? It's a clinical diagnosis. You have a triad of rheumatoid arthritis, splenomegaly, and neutropenia, maybe like ulcers. For neutropenia, of course, you need some labs. Management of Felties. Treat the underlying freaking disease called rheumatoid arthritis. How? By DMARDs and others, and we'll talk about rheumatoid arthritis treatment. If the patient has infections, of course, you give antibiotics. Don't say, hey, sir, you have tuberculosis, but I have to treat the rheumatoid arthritis first. Shut up. You should do both of them at the same time. Don't let the patient die from TB. What if a patient has TB and sometimes you gotta stop some DMARDs because they increase the risk of infection? It's hard to treat felty, I'm telling you. If neutrophils are high, you can try GCSF, granulocyte colony stimulating factor. It's a boost for your granulocytes, including the neutrophils. Splenectomy, of course. Why? I've told you before. Neutrophils are kicked out into the peripheral blood. Okay, no more IgG against the neutrophils. And the battlefield is gone. What I would like you to remember forever is Felty syndrome is a triad of splenomegaly, rheumatoid, and neutropenia. In the next video, we'll have a great mnemonic. Actually, three mnemonics about Felty syndrome. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be great. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notified. Join me on Facebook and all of these platforms. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis to support the channel and to get my PDF notes, cases, audio notes, etc. Thank you so much for watching. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Until next time, please be safe, stay happy, and study hard.